Did you know that in Q3 of 2023, 7.6 billion hours of live stream content was watched across all platforms? Yes, I said 7 billion. Since the advent of live streaming, many have chosen this as their choice of consumed content. So in this modern day, where it's all too easy to press that go live button, it goes without saying that sometimes people live stream total horror. I'm Ryan from Tragedy Tales, and because you guys seem to love the last video so much, this week, yet again, I've plunged into the depths of the internet to uncover five more bone-chilling live streams that shocked viewers to their core. So, without any messing about, get whatever you may need, and let's get right into it. Over the years, some truly disgusting things have unfolded as thousands of viewers watched. From the man who killed his girlfriend after donations told him to lock her outside in the freezing cold, to the woman who live streamed her sister's death after a brutal car crash. Some people just don't know when to not go live, and some people don't know when to stop when things go wrong. With that in mind, this abhorrent stream begins on the 5th of August, 2023 within a streamer's house rented by an IRL streamer by the name of Only Use Me Blade. Only Use Me Blade, or his real name, Brian Riso, is, in the loosest form possible, a content creator that's been around for over 10 years. Blade's presence on the internet began on YouTube, producing Call of Duty content, but when that COD scene dried up in 2015, Blade moved over to streaming on literally any platform that would let him, soon becoming what the internet refers to as a lol cow. Blade then became a drunk IRL streamer, becoming notorious as someone who would go live, host parties, and get black out drunk. I'm not gonna lie, just researching this guy, there's a litany of controversy. One even including Chris Hansen. We're not gonna dive into any of that here on this channel, but just know that this is the tip of the iceberg of things that Only Use Me Blade is known for. Just Google his name. Anyway, Only Use Me Blade would go around on stream and rent out properties. In these properties, he'd have crazy parties and he'd stream it for donations, rinse and repeat. In these houses, he would set up 24 hour cameras and invite multiple streamers over to go live, streaming the entire day, even sleeping. However, to add a bit of variety, Blade would sometimes invite regular viewers to the parties. These guests would usually get completely wasted and would then be used for donations, essentially. That day of August the 5th, 2023, Only Use Me Blade invited a regular viewer by the name of Willie Two Guns. His real name was William C. Buckner, and long story short, Only Use Me Blade was dating a woman called Beck, and their three-year relationship crumbled and shortly after, Willie began dating her. Despite this, Willie was a frequent viewer of Only Use Me Blade and had met him on a previous occasion. The 11 hour stream in question was hosted by one of the streamers at the house by the name of Tone IRL. The stream began with three people and guest Willie Two Guns already in the party house. They were smoking and getting ready for the day, but Willie was running low on sleep. Having arrived at 6 a.m after driving 14 hours to get to the live stream house. Gotta have it, especially with Blake. Yeah, dude, no, but dude, Blake loses every single lighter he owns. This is the only lighter that has lasted this long in this house, and it's just because I brought it. The group then hops in the car, goes to Walmart, and upon watching this stream, early in the day, it's already clear to see that Willie is slurring his words. It looks like he may be on some sort of illicit drugs or substances, or it could be that he's already had a drink. Huh? What? Look, look, look at all that. Oh. You're up there acting for, asking for fruit juice. What are you talking about? What are you saying right now? Pineapple juice, bro. I, what are you talking about? Pineapple juice. Well, I'm asking for shampoo. And look, here we are. 
Now, this does make sense because Willie had recently been involved in a nasty car crash. He was on heavy pain medication and he was also on Ambien, a strong sleeping tablet. This was something that the entire group was aware of. Throughout the day, the group goes to another couple of Walmarts, the first in which they get asked to leave by security after blasting music down the aisles. Yeah, thank, thank you for the five. Hey, you have a nice night, bro. Radio Raheem, you're the man. The group then goes to Burger King before returning to the party house. As the stream continued back at the house, Willie began drinking heavily and smoking marijuana. Dude, I don't know what you having. Bro. Lazy, bro. No, you're just tired. And you're on Ambien. Oh, yeah, that was this morning, bro. It's just a <laughs> It's Blade Scatty. Yeah, did he know? I don't know. It's the thing. What do you mean? It's, I'm sure it's not running. Not even in the caddy. I know that's the thing. <laughs> what are you talking about? This guy's making no sense. No fucking sense. Despite streamer Tone IRL knowing that Willie was on Ambien, a strong sleeping pill, and pain medication, and the fact he was sleep deprived, Tone says this to his viewers. None of us have three dollars. Shh, run to another room. Real quick. Shh, run to another room. Keep filming, Willie. This shit is hilarious. Okay, when it's time to serve I got you. Thank you for the three. And that was a good way to be inconspicuous. I got you. We're going to keep filming him until he is literally unable to keep his eyes open. I know he is extremely sleep deprived. He's on Ambien. He's been drinking, um, smoked weed, um, terrible sleep deprivation, traveling. Uh, he's a little out of his mind right now. His, his sentences aren't making a whole lot of sense. So, I mean, yeah, we'll chill with him until he's completely out. But when Beg gets back, I need my hair done. I'm like, come on, man. What's going on? get it wasted he said he would take fire cells if y'all donated on my stream so it's up to y'all I'll, I'll, I'll char I mean he said 10 15 21s so it's up to y'all I mean I'm not trying to like bait donos but if y'all want to see him get fucked up I don't know how many he'd be able to do like if someone donated a triple that might be the only thing he could take but we'll see it's uh he said he would do it No, he said 21 for a triple because he donated. He literally took a triple in there and then sent the dono to me. Yeah, he said no. He did not. He said 20. He said 21 triples. That's what he, he sent me for a triple. I might be wrong. I could be wrong. And if I am, I'll eat my words. I'll go in there and ask him. You can see that Tone is incentivizing people to donate to get Willie wasted setting tiers of donations as to how many shots Willie would have. Tone then goes inside and asks Willie about taking a drink for a donation. Willie! Hey, Hello. you said you would take a, a triple or a you single? Huh? I'm saying if someone donates a triple, yeah, yeah, yeah. you'll take uh, it? Yeah. Y'all heard it? How much for, for, it, for how it. much is it? How much is it? Ten 21, for twenty-one. Twenty-one for a triple. Yeah, 21. I told y'all. And ten for a single. You send a twenty-one, I'll send you the triple. Uh, and ten for a single, fifteen Look, for a double. Even... By now, it was five p.m., and Willie had drunk a large amount of whiskey to himself, almost finishing the whole bottle. Despite this, Willie has a big smile on his face when a twenty-one dollar donation comes in, meaning that he has to have three shots. Yo, Pierre, you want to come out here? <laughs> Anonymous sent $21. Ten? Let's do oh, it, Willie. 21. Add two more. All right. Add two more. Okay, I got it. Thank you, bro. Plan is in execution. Dude. A Dude, three line. That is not a triple. That's a quarter. What? what? Why did you. To the triple. Huh? 
tone thanks to viewers and Willie pours himself a stupidly large shot of whiskey. It looks about four or five shots. Amazingly, Willie downs this in one. What? what? Why did you... <laughs> to the triple. Huh? To the triple. It's it not was... a triple. Is it a triple? It's the next line. I don't, I don't know, know if that's how that Look works. Look at me. Put that on me. Well, the two guns, baby. All right, whatever. I think I'm it's a quad beef. or more, but whatever. Do it. I'm drinking it. Why do you care? I don't. Just go for it. Crown Royal. Yeah. That wasn't a shot of any sort. Well, it was a three-shotter. That was more than three shots, in my opinion. I, I give my people a little bit more. I know. Why do they love me so much, bro? I, uh, there you go. I don't ask them for I love money. you. I, I love them. you for what you just did for I'm me. I'm just asking for love. As donations continue to trickle in, Tone is more than happy to keep pouring drinks for Willie, as he clearly becomes too intoxicated to do so himself. Yo, Pierre, you wanna come out here? <laughs> oh. Rat Andy sent ten dollars. Drink up, Willie, to Wacko. That's one more single. All right, can you handle one more single? Yeah, I got it right now. I'm All right, well, they're not gonna be able to keep doing it if you take extra okay, every time. Okay, I'll take this single. Like, I'll give you a fat single. Cheers, brother. That, that's what this whole thing was about, bro. Was you? you okay, I appreciate just that. I know. I've been in contact with you for. Put the camera down. Put the camera down. I, I, well, there's cameras everywhere. People but, love you, bro. Uh, I want to see you get away from danger. There is, but there's most a, importantly, there's a great division of my viewers. I know. Half man, of them want I me to want die and do danger. drugs, and half and those are the danger viewers. I want danger. And half want me to be healthy and do better. I want danger. That's between you and Dan. <laughs> we'll talk. I mean, uh, we'll see. I, 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 there's no I, I know see. I, we'll see. That's not a vape. <laughs> He'll say I... You just tried to hit the cigarette no, lighter no, as a vape. He will say, I've Here. had enough. Here, take this real quick so we can get it done. No, you don't need a lighter. Good luck. Oh, shit. I'm trying to do the other button. Tone then lets him inhale on his marijuana pen before a donation comes in and he pours him one last drink. What was his neighbor? His neighbor? Yeah, what I was I talking about the best? We're going to Gore Corman. What? I tried to call him Gore Corman. I have no idea what the fuck Yo, yeah. Pierre, you want to come out here? <laughs> Hold on. Joe Miller sent $10. Willie, a man that holds his alcohol, one more shot. Let's go. He can hold it. Y'all saw what he just did. All right, he can handle one more. You got it? One more? One more. After this, you done? You can cut it off after this. It's up to you. No, no, no. No, no, wait. Oh, boom. Boom. Willie drinks it, and this is clearly the straw that broke the camel's back. After this final whiskey, Willie becomes very lethargic, and for two minutes, he drifts in and out of consciousness, trying to speak to Tone through slurred speech. You good? You need to, you need to lay down? You know, we need to get him la- hey, we need to get him laid down before he falls. He's going to fall down and really hurt himself. He's fine? All right, fine. There you, go. you say he's fine? It's on you if he falls and breaks his, fu- his face. He's the one that wants to stand there. Like I, well, I'm trying to get him to fu- He's passing out, dude. He's drunk as shit. No. Willie! Willie! What's up? Willie! Yeah. What up? You good? Dap me up. Give me a handshake if you're coherent. Oh, he's not coherent. Yeah, see, no handshake. No. Is he knock on his head? Oh, it does make a sound. Listen. Bro, you need to get move from the spot and like find somewhere to crash. There is a moment where Tone asks the other streamer to get help to get Willie an air mattress, but as they're discussing it, Willie then passes out while standing up and falls backwards onto the bin and onto the kitchen floor. 
You know what? I fucking told you. I fucking told you, bro. What uh, I don't know. What do you think fucking happened? So Willie fell on the floor, and my first response would be to see if he's all right, rush to his aid, and if he's not, call an ambulance, right? However, in this case, this didn't happen. Instead of rushing to Willie's aid, Tone IRL and the other streamer in the room stood back and filmed. Back on my flow and you know how it goes, you know how the stream goes. 24 hours a day doing stupid shit, this is how it plays out. We see this guy with the two guns, did a little too much and now he's out. Oh, he got, he's done. He's drunk, drunk on Ambien, hasn't slept, smoked weed. He literally was linked up against this and then went boom. Yo, Blade just walked in, asked what happened, and I told him what's going on. Yeah, for certain, Willie is done. We can't save this, resuscitate him or nothing. Yeah, I could try to give him CPR, but I'm okay. I think he's breathing. Let's go ahead and check his face. Yo, Willie, are you there? I gotta make sure, just in case. I don't wanna be liable for your death. That would suck a lot. Pressing on your belly. He's breathing, he's good. It's important to note here that while it was mainly Tone IRL pouring drinks, nobody force fed drinks to Willie. Nobody forced him to attend the party with Willie now lying flat on his back, Tone continues to stream while the view account rises and donations begin to pour in. Instead of calling for help, the chat demanded that the group draw on Willie. Tone, 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 stop, stop, stop. What? Can I tell you something? What? We have paints. Um, we have, oh yeah, never mind. Oh, I know, I know what to do, my chat already told me. Um, you chat yeah, well, I, I don't know about the paints, but I had something else, but I bought something else. Because drawing on passed out people is apparently fun and cool, and something that they did in the other streams where people passed out, they would paint them from head to toe, they quickly began searching for the paint that they bought earlier in the day. They find the paint, and as the music blasts in the background, Tones and the other streamer began scrawling over Willy as he lay there unconscious on the floor. Then they play clown music and paint his face like a clown, covering his nose in red paint and his cheeks, and then painting his nails in pen. Tone then pulls up Willie's shirt and writes Juggalo on his belly. It was only after they graffitied his body did they then notice that he was trying to be sick. They rolled him over and he vomited all over the floor. I, I kept telling you, bro, when he passed out on that counter like that, bro, I knew something was up. Like well, that, that was not normal. That's why I kept saying he- I thought he was kidding. No, he was not kidding. I thought he was like acting. No, he's, dude, he's been taking Ambien. He hasn't slept in forever. He was drinking, he smoked weed. He's fucking, he's like a blue the right now. Some people speculate that Only Use Me Blade was hesitant to help Willie because he was dating his ex. But 30 minutes later, they checked 
and Willie's breathing had begun to fade, prompting Only Use Me Blade to then call 911. While on the phone, Willie coughs off a little bit and Tone rushes outside and tells Blade to cancel the ambulance, not wanting to deal with law enforcement and saying that he was now fine. Blade, Blade. He's fine. Uh, I'm sorry, cancel that. Um, He's fine. He's starting to wake up. Call. He's sorry. He's... Everything's okay. Thank you so much. All right. Thank God. I really didn't want to do it, please. Thank God. Uh, do you have ice? No, no, no. Matt said that that breathing is not good. It's called abdominal breathing. Okay. What does that mean? Well, I'm checking his normal breathing yeah. in between. Does he take pills? Oh, yes. Ambient. Okay, but he's, he's drinking tank dust. That's bad. It is bad. Okay. And I kept telling him all day, but he wanted to drink and take shots. He even donated for his own triple shot. At this point, Willie was snoring, but only used me blade said that he was fine that said that he's gonna come around from this and that he would be fine what do you think i mean we can call we can call, uh, it, it's up to you and up in there to you it's your house dude if you want to call if, he, if he's fucking breathing he's out i said it's fine with viewers begging them to get help for willie they checked and now his fingers had begun to turn blue this is when they called 911 for good Yes, he's snoring. He's snoring. Yes. They began wiping down all the face paint that they'd applied, but this wasn't going to get rid of all the pen all over his fingers and the horrible writing on his stomach. An entire 44 minutes after Willie had fallen, the ambulance finally arrived. When they got into the house, the first responders asked Tone to stop streaming. But shockingly, he doesn't want to. He wants to document the first responders attending to Willie, all while donations fly in. He tells the first responders that he turned it off, but he'd actually just placed it on the side. Okay, okay so basically, um, he just got here this morning, like 6 a.m. He had been driving all night, so he's very sleep deprived, okay? And he's, what? What? Well, it's, my, it's in our own home. But yeah, don't film us, please. Okay. I just want to give the patient care. Okay. All right. My bad. Yeah, yeah. My bad. Sorry. We're YouTubers. We document everything. But anyways, I'll, all right. I'll put it up. But anyways, what I, what I say is, uh, he had been up for many hours when he got here. He's, uh, he's just going out this morning. He started drinking heavily and he passed out like this twice now. Okay. We did all of those other things. This is part of the history. Yeah. I, I turned it on. I'll show you. It's turned off. Look. The stream then shows Willie being rushed to hospital where doctors tried their best to save his life. That would be a waste of time. Damn, I have beat my record of my biggest dream yesterday. Holy shit, 1,300 viewers. I just beat my, my stream record again. Two days in a row, 1,200 viewers yesterday, three, three, 1,300 today. Let's go, boys. I love y'all, man. Thank you so much for all the support. I cannot believe this is happening with Willie, man. In a stream hosted two hours after, Blade and the other streamers discuss the incident. Willie's in the hospital. It was pretty bad. Um, he, okay, just to confirm, he cracked that bottle of big ass bottle of alcohol, right? Yep. It was almost gone when he passed out. No one else was drinking it? Nope, no one else was drinking it. I didn't drink till like a, an hour and a half ago, so. Willie spent the next month in a comatose state. And while he did wake up for a short time, he sadly passed away on the 9th of September, surrounded by his loved ones. Apparently, his cause of death was congenital heart failure. However, other reports stated that there was an issue with the ventilator that caused his death. However, some speculate that it was the mixture of ambient and alcohol that led to his death. It's unsure if the other streamers knew that mixing these two were deadly. This stream went viral with fans of Blade accusing him and the other streamers of inadvertently causing Willie's death. Even Keemstar got involved and called Blade, 
And this is what he had to say. What was this tweet that you made about about me? Oh, about the guy that died? Yeah, uh, somebody did die, but it wasn't my fault, though. So, so you doing these drunk streams and, you know, people donate money for a drink and then you have all these workers and you have a house and when someone does uh, you know, pass out. You don't take care of them. You just, you know, fuck with them. No, okay. Well, then, then no, 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 Keem. First off, Keem, uh, this guy came to my house. He woke me up. I didn't encourage him to drink any alcohol. I didn't do anything. I wasn't drunk. Now, in my opinion, he's got a point. Yes, it was Blade's stupid antics that led to this, but nobody is directly to blame. Nobody forced Willie to have a drink while on medication nobody forced him to go to the house he did all of these things himself knowing the risks and it cost him his life however i will say that tone irl and that other streamer that drew on his face wrote on his stomach and painted his nails are truly the worst tone really leaned into the fact that willie was spiraling out of control trying to swing as many donations as possible while willie lay there dying perhaps if they'd called an ambulance the minute they realized that he wasn't well, instead of painting him like a clown, maybe Willie would still be with us today. One day, you could be walking down the street, minding your own business, and a plane could come falling out of the sky and crush you. Or you could be driving down the road when all of a sudden the road caves in and you tumble into a broken hot water main, being boiled alive. Death can come seemingly out of nowhere, and this video is no exception. This haunting stream unfolded in Wairu Valley in Auckland, New Zealand, on the 27th of January, 2023. That Friday afternoon, regions across the upper North Island of New Zealand began to experience heavy rainfall. All throughout January, they've been seeing it. It had been raining very heavily, leading to some places flooding and homes being damaged. And on the 10th of January, they'd also been hit with storm hail. Many Kiwis were already saying that this was the country's worst summer ever, but they had no idea what was coming. That seemingly ordinary day would be the start of a nightmare for thousands. In the afternoon, it began to rain and it just did not stop. An average of 250 millimeters of rain fell, with Auckland receiving an entire summer's worth of rainfall in just 24 hours, officially making it the wettest day in Auckland on record. The rain brought with it landslides and of course, flooding. By 4 p.m., the flooding was widespread, with West Auckland and North Shore being the worst affected areas. As people fought to protect their homes and businesses, 34-year-old father of two, Daniel Miller, instead focused his attention on helping others. As flash floods swept across Waru Valley, a small suburb of Auckland, at approximately 4.45 p.m., Daniel went live on Facebook. This stream begins with Daniel wading through a flooded street. In the short stream, he says, this is all bad. Something's telling me to go up and check on these people in this house, so I'm going to. Daniel's friends and family were watching, including his own father, who was 350 kilometers away in Napier. The stream continues, showing scenes that are straight out of a horror movie. It looks ridiculous. On the stream, as Daniel waded through the water, his dad told him to be careful. All captured live, Daniel can be seen in the flood water, with a group of people stood close by. With a man Dan reporting, I think I need to go home, put my wetsuit on, guys. Somebody is telling me to go up and check on the people in this house. The stream then pans to a fast flowing stream of water, and this is when, all of a sudden, the stream goes underwater and is abruptly cut off. Daniel's father, who was watching along with lots of other people, just assumed that he dropped his phone in the water, expecting to hear from him when he got a new one. But upon re-watching the stream, it looked like something else could have happened. That night, 
At 10 p.m., a state of emergency was declared as thousands were forced out of their homes. Daniel's father, Steve, attempted to contact his son's flatmates, but when he couldn't get in contact with them, he began to worry. I can only imagine the nightmare of sitting there in your own house, not knowing if your son is okay, knowing that you're too far away to help. Steve spent the entire night wondering what had happened, praying that he'd just simply dropped his phone. Sadly, however, this glimmer of hope was shattered when the police knocked on his door in the morning to tell him that Daniel had died. Daniel's body was discovered at 7.30 p.m., two hours after the stream, in a culvert, located a few hundred feet away from where the stream occurred. A culvert is essentially a drainage structure that's designed to allow water to flow underneath infrastructures. So he was in the sewer. But how did he get here, you're wondering? Well, as Daniel was wading through the water, he fell into an open manhole and was swept through the sewers to his death. It turns out that the floodwaters had been so severe that they'd actually dislodged a manhole cover, creating a horrible death trap. Tony Hudson, Daniel's friend, said that it happened right on camera. He was live and one wrong step, he was gone. My gut sank. While some manhole covers in flood prone areas are fitted with safety hinges or safety nets to help prevent them flying away in a flood, it seems that these safety measures just aren't very effective or Daniel is extremely unlucky. The Auckland anniversary weekend floods took the lives of four people, including Daniel. It caused widespread damage, affecting 25 suburbs of the city. It closed vital major motorways and left six to 8,000 homes in need of damage assessment. Daniel's dad has since made the journey to visit the manhole that took his son's life, where flowers and a cross now lay as a memorial. This entry is a brutal reminder that life can be snatched away at any moment don't take anything for granted. Daniel was only out in the floodwaters to help others, and this kindness cost him his life. Now this entry brings us to Ploiesti in Romania's Prahova County on the 15th of August, 2020. Travelling along a country road that day was 29-year-old Tavi Pisitu, along with his wife, Monica. Tavi was a Manel pop artist, Manel being a mixture of Oriental Romanian folk and contemporary pop music. Those who knew him described him as a positive person, one that would never upset anyone. However, that day, Tavi and his wife, Monica, were driving along a road in Ploiesti when Tavi decided that he'd go live on Facebook. The stream opens with Tavi and Monica in a car with music blasting. The pair of them are navigating the roads at some speed. The clip shows Tavi looking deeply at the camera lens as he smoked cigarettes. For a brief moment on the stream, he panned the camera to show him and his wife in the car with both of them grinning at the camera. As the pair drove along, they crossed a railway crossing. However, the music was so loud that both of them did not notice that a train was coming. It's assumed that they also missed the train signals that would have been going off. All captured on stream, you can see Tavi's face of horror as he realizes a train is about to collide with the car. He lets out a scream and the stream abruptly ends. The train had been traveling between Manicio and Ploiesti and it collided with the car, dragging them both almost 660 feet in front of the train. The power of the train crumpled the side of the car that Tavi was in and triggered both airbags. In a video that was recorded shortly after, it shows the train has stopped with the car crumpled in front of it. It shows a crowd of people gathering around the mangled wreckage, trying desperately to get Tavi and Monica out. 
However, it was clear at this point that Tavi had sustained major injuries. The train had impacted with his side of the car. It had completely pulverized him, killing him on the spot. Monica, his wife, was fully awake during this whole ordeal and had to witness this happen. You truly can't make this up, but eerily, this accident came just weeks after Tavi shared a post saying, sometimes the wrong train will take you to the right destination. According to the officials, the accident happened because of non-compliance with the rules at the level crossing. So yeah, it's assumed that they just didn't notice the red flashing lights and they didn't hear the train coming. Monica was extracted from the car in critical condition. She too had sustained heavy injuries, broken bones, punctured lungs, and a broken collarbone, but she had survived. Some viewers jumped online and pointed the finger at Monica, stating that she should have been paying attention while driving and that she was the reason that Tavi had died. Some articles even stated that she would be held for manslaughter, but it seems that this never actually happened. At the end of the day, this was an accident. Monica then spent the next several weeks in hospital where she underwent surgery to save her life. Tavi was laid to rest later that month with over 100 people attending his funeral to show their support. Sadly, Monica was in such a bad state that she was unable to attend her own husband's funeral. After his passing, in November, Monica posted to Tavi's Facebook saying the two of us were inseparable from each other and that she'd miss him forever. But this is one stupidly unlucky and stupidly tragic story. Monica and Tavi were in the wrong place at the wrong time. And when you're driving around with music blasting, it's important to remember that your hearing is one of the most important senses when you're driving. It alerts you to a lot more things than you think. And while there's no law against someone driving while blasting tunes or wearing headphones, it's not recommended and can even catch you in arrest if an officer thinks you're being distracted due to it. So next time you go out in your car and you're crossing that train crossing, perhaps look twice because you might have just missed a speeding train. This entry is so tragic that I almost didn't include it in any of my videos but I feel it's important to remember our mistakes, remember our tragedies, so that we can learn from them. With that in mind, this horrific entry begins on Wednesday, the 14th of June, 2017, in North Kensington, London. That warm summer's night, at approximately 12 a.m., 293 men, women, and children hunkered down for bedtime at the Grenfell Tower. Built in 1974, the Grenfell Tower was a 24-storey, high-rise block of flats situated on Grenfell Road in West London. The 221 feet tall block of flats contained 120 one- and two-bedroom flats and was actually capable of housing 600 people. It's worth noting that the block only had one single staircase up and down to these 120 flats. While some people began to drift away in their sleep, while others remained awake due to Ramadan, a refrigerator on the fourth floor suffered an electrical fault. This spark would start a flame that would start the UK's worst residential fire since World War II. The resident of the flat on the fourth floor alerted emergency services promptly and two fire engines arrived just six minutes later. Fire Brigade. Yeah, hello, hi, in the fire, flat 16 Greenfield Tower. So we have fire where? Uh, fl uh, flat 16 Greenfield Tower. In the flat, fridge. Right, hang on. Flat, flat 16 Greenfield Tower. Flat 16, and what's the postcode? Uh, W111TG. W111TG for Tango. Yeah, but can you quick, please? Yeah, would you just, I have to get the address, okay, Glen. Flat 16 Greenfield Tower, W111TG. The fire brigade are on their way. Are you outside? Yeah. yeah, yeah, I'm outside. Yeah, well, the fire engines are on their way. Just tell me how many floors you've got there. It, it's it's the fourth floor. Right, okay. Right, quick, 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 quick. They're on their it's way burning. already. Yes, I know it's burning, but they are on their way. You've only just called, as long as you're okay. By the time they got there, smoke was already everywhere. 
all throughout the corridors, filling the night sky, any resident who phoned 999 from inside their flat were told to stay put because each flat should be fireproofed from its neighbors. This policy also meant that there wasn't any central fire alarm, nor were there any sprinklers in the block of flats. They call this the stay put policy, and this was introduced in the 80s and is still a cornerstone for safety for these kind of buildings today, as it's deemed a lot safer if a fire can be contained rather than evacuated. However, in this case, the fire initially began ripping upwards through the flats in a straight column, breaking into the kitchens of the flats with door numbers ending in six on each floor. This allowed firefighters to quickly evacuate these flats that were in the firing line whilst advising others to stay put. At 1.15 a.m., a team of firefighters began tackling the fire that had begun from the refrigerator, but by now, it had already spread exponentially, far, far faster than any of them could have imagined. The flames not only rose vertically as they predicted, but as the blaze had begun near a window, it had lurched out the window and spread quickly across the outside of the building's exterior, rising rapidly, spreading at what was described as a terrifying rate. As the fire began to eat at the exterior of the building, the outside cladding began to melt and bubble away, causing large quantities of scalding hot debris to rain on those who were watching below. One resident said that soon, one whole side of the building was on fire. The cladding went up like a matchstick. Now the problem was that the walls of Grenfell were three layers thick. Between the outside cladding and the inside, there's a layer of insulation that is reportedly more flammable than the cladding and a ventilated air cavity. This air cavity carried oxygen to the fire, feeding it like a chimney. Attempts to ease the fire from outside with an external jet proved unsuccessful as it was mostly burning behind the external waterproof rain screen. Firefighters quickly became overwhelmed. These flames were ravenous, like nothing they'd ever seen before. Several attempts to quell the blaze also proved unsuccessful. At 1.30 a.m., while the stay put policy remained in place, people began to flee their flats, taking their chances with the smoke. Flames on one side of the building were now beginning to reach the roof. The smoke filled the one staircase up and down with thick smoke, and while some tried to escape, they were quickly overwhelmed by this smoke and passed out in the staircase. The situation was now out of control. Because the smoke ventilation system within Grenfell was woefully inadequate, smoke began seeping into every flat. To make things worse, smoke from the external fires that were on the outside was being funneled into the tower due to the walls, further drowning residents in toxic smoke. Now this smoke smelled very strange. As I said, people were passing out in the staircase trying to escape, but it didn't have a normal smoke smell. One survivor said the smell of the smoke was just toxic. 
I can only describe it as what I can imagine as chemicals. It was something that I'd never smelt in my life. Residents said the smoke burned their eyes, irritated their throats, and made it difficult to swallow, making them dizzy and leaving them gasping for air. Thick smoke in the lobbies appeared early into the fire, which is why many people shut their doors and followed the advice to stay put instead of fleeing the building. However, trapped all the way up on the 23rd floor, almost 200 feet up in the air, was 31-year-old Rania Ibrahim and her two daughters. At 1.38 a.m., Rania took to Facebook to document her plight. The six and a half minute live stream begins with Rania and her neighbor starting to panic as the smoke drifted beneath the door. Her neighbor tells Rania to keep her door closed, to which she does. She said that she stirred awake due to the sound of persistent knocks on her front door. Initially, it was just Rania and her two daughters in the flat but soon, around four other residents from her floor sought refuge in her home, because her corner of the flat remained untouched by the spreading fire. Okay, don't, don't open, open the front door. You're going to bring the smoke in. Okay. You're not going to be able to breathe. Your I'm children scared. are going to be able someone to breathe. Outside? They, they're in the other flat. Are you sure? They're, they've gone into the, into the other flat. <laughs> Listen. Okay. Standing near the door, the smoke is not going to help you. Okay. Yeah? Okay, just Where's this. your husband? Just not. That's okay. Well, this... Okay. There's too much smoke in there. Okay. Okay, I'm not opening it. Allah, la ilaha illallah, fi harira, fi lahumara, la hawla, wa la quwata, illa billahi, la alayhi, la azim, ya Allah. As the stream continues, the flat slowly fills up with smoke. Rania goes to the window in her lounge and shows the darkened skyline of London. The stream pans down and you can see flames and smoke eating away at the flats below. It's horrible. Sirens filled the night sky as Rania held her phone out the window and prayed. Unfortunately, the only part I was able to find translated was, the whole building is burning and we're on the top floor. She then questioned how she could possibly get out now Tragically, in the stream, you can hear other neighbors, other trapped residents shouting from their windows. <coughs> We're stuck on the 23rd floor! Hello! I'm going to London. There's too many people stuck upstairs! Hello! يلا دعونا لا اله الا الله ادعونا بالستر ان شاء الله ربنا يحفظنا بحفظه يا رب يا رب يا الله <coughs> Rania's sister Saida rushed to the scene when she found that there was a fire in her sister's flat when she got there she watched from the ground she said i saw smoke and watched the fire escalate and move to other flats it was rapid the way the fire escalated was strange as it started from one side and went up around the corners and because of the wind it took it all the way around the block however not all the flats were on fire
the London Fire Brigade escalated its response. There was now 15 fire engines at the scene. Unfortunately, as firefighters marched up the building in a desperate attempt to keep up with the flames, when they tried to venture above the fourth floor, they were met with unbearable heat, along with extremely thick, toxic smoke, reducing visibility to zero. As the fire enveloped itself around the building, people on the ground saw trapped residents continue to switch their lights off and on and waving out the windows for help. Some were even holding their children to the window in a desperate attempt to get help, but it was futile. No one could reach them. One resident googled how to escape and found that it was possible by tying bedsheets. He tied it together and lowered himself to the flat below. People saw the man climb in, only to see the entire flat engulfed in a fireball seconds later. Some were so desperate that they leapt out of their windows. Horribly, these deaths were later attributed to suicide, despite being a direct cause of the fire. Shortly after 2am, a major incident was declared and the number of fire engines was raised from 25 to 40, and the number of fire rescue units increased to 10. Flames continued to race across the north and east elevations of the tower and started to spread across the crown diagonally and across the face of the building. Some residents who found themselves trapped discovered that they couldn't descend the staircase due to the smoke and the amount of dead people in the way. Instead, they made their way up the tower, hoping that they could then be rescued, but they were going up to certain death. At 2.47 a.m., the advice to stay put was officially revoked, instead advising all occupants to evacuate. Sadly, however, by now, it was just far too dangerous to do so. According to Rania's sister, who was on the ground watching this unfold, at 3 a.m., she spoke to a police officer saying that her sister was trapped on floor 23, to which he responded, tell your sister and daughters to jump off. An absolutely horrific, abhorrent, and insensitive thing to say. By 3 a.m., Rania was still in touch with her family on Facebook, as many residents still sheltered in her flat on the 23rd floor. Throughout the night, 250 London Fire Brigade firefighters, along with 70 fire engines from stations all across London, were involved in a desperate attempt to control the flames. But as the sun peaked its head above the horizon, firefighters were still fighting the blaze and attempting to rescue those trapped. The last resident was evacuated at seven minutes past eight on the 15th of June, but the block continued to smolder for 60 hours. CCTV evidence concluded that 223 people of 293 present had escaped. But horrifyingly, this tragedy took the lives of 72 people in some of the worst ways imaginable injuring 70 more. Smoke inhalation was the cause of death for the majority, and sadly, most were children. Only four people were able to be rescued from the top two floors. If they hadn't have listened to the official advice to stay put, the death toll would have most likely been significantly less. Rania's sister stayed on the ground until 8 a.m. Rania and her two daughters had not come out of the flat. Her sister went to multiple hospitals around London in the hope that she was alive. A lot of people said that Rania had made it out of the tower and that she was most likely recovering in hospital. Sadly, months went by with no update from the police. It was only on the 20th of September, 2017, when an inquest was opened into Rania's death that it was confirmed that tragically, Rania and her two children had died. They were only identifiable by their dental records. The three of them had been found snuggled together in the bathroom. A truly heartbreaking update. The following day, a vigil was held around the corner of the block where families and friends alike confided in each other in grief and anger. If you'd seen that building go up like I saw it from my back window, you'd know that building was not fit for purpose. Somewhere along the line, someone made a catastrophic error. At the moment, we're grieving, you know, but there's a public anger underneath, and we do want to see someone held accountable for this. 
photos and memories of the dead were put up and then residents, quite rightly, looked to who was to blame. It turns out multiple factors compounded the tragedy that night. For starters, like all high rises in the UK, there were no sprinklers and only one staircase and there was no evacuation plan. In fact, it was later revealed that for disabled residents, the landlords had not created any plans whatsoever, relying solely on the stay put advice. A toxicology expert later found that people who were in good health could have escaped from the top floors without collapsing until 2.33 a.m. While the smoke was toxic, leading to instant eye irritation, they found that it would take quite a lot to pass out in the staircase. Another reason the fatality rate was not much higher is due to the high percentage of Muslim community in Grenfell. Due to Ramadan, many observing Muslim residents were awake for the pre-dawn meal of Suha, which allowed them to alert neighbors and escape. Another key contributing factor was the smoke. Because the ventilation system was so bad, smoke was actually being funneled inside the building rather than out. And this is why all the corridors got filled up really quickly. And because there was so much of it and it was irritating their eyes, everyone thought, I'm gonna stay inside. As I said previously, when the firefighters entered, they were also hindered by the near zero visibility on the stairwell. One of the firefighters crew manager said that he was surprised by the amount of smoke, describing conditions as, basically, you couldn't see your hand in front of your face. It was thick black smoke. You couldn't see anyone else. You literally had to bump into them. But the main reason that this fire spread so fast and the main reason why it was so deadly was the exterior cladding and insulation. In the previous years, Grenfell had undergone renovations on the outside of the tower and to save £300,000 in renovation costs, corners were cut and cheaper materials were used in the cladding. These cheaper materials were very flammable. In fact, this particular cladding was made illegal in the UK and despite the Grenfell Tower being inspected 16 times while this renovation was undergone, nobody noticed the illegal materials being used, leading some to question the authenticity and quality of these inspections. They also found that the safety cavity barriers in the walls of Grenfell intended to prevent fires, in some cases were the wrong size and even installed incorrectly. And the worst part about all of this is that government officials knew about this dangerous cladding as concerns were raised years before following previous major high-rise fires. However, nothing was done and it led to the deaths of 72 innocent people. In the years following the disaster, the key focus was to strip the flammable cladding from the high-rise block of flats above 18 meters. By the end of December of 2022, 463 out of the 487 of these buildings had started or completed the work to remove the cladding. However, there are still 750,000 buildings that are classed as medium height where work has not yet begun to remove this dangerous cladding. This same cladding is used in buildings all over, including Britain, France, and even Australia, leaving many people who live in these particular buildings in fear that this could happen again. The court cases of this fire look like they continue to this day. In a high court hearing in London in 2023, the judge approved a 150 million Great British Pound settlement that was to be split among the bereaved families, survivors, and local residents. In February of 2024, more than 100 firefighters affected by the fire had their claims settled for 20 million from the government. However, no amount of money can make up for what horrors went on here. Some of this was serious nightmare fuel. I won't wish it on my worst enemy. Today, the charred hollow visage of Grenfell still rests as a constant reminder of the tragedy, now being covered up by a memorial banner. While plans have been made to demolish the block, these won't happen for years. But that is the end of this video. May the 72 people who passed away in this horrific tragedy, along with the rest of the people featured on this video, rest in peace. I'm gonna say it one more time, but wowzers trousers, this one was insane. Some of these streams left me with my jaw open. I almost can't believe that some of these streams happened. 
Firstly, Willie, who passed out at Blade's stream house, only to be drawn on and abused while you're out cold, is simply disgusting. While Blade streams were known for the paint, it never usually got this crazy. The people in the house knew that Willie was on various medications and should have at least tried to stop Willie drinking, but instead, they sort of encouraged it and let him have a great time. However, the worst bit about this stream was Tone trying to get donations out of it, hitting his personal best view account and bragging about it afterwards. I have no words. Daniel falling down an open manhole, being drowned in an endless swirling pit of water is something that I never even thought about happening. It honestly never even occurred to me that a manhole could be open under flood water. Of course, the manholes do have safety features installed to stop them unwinding in the storms. The lesson here is to stay inside during floods. Don't go wading out to be a hero because you might just lose your life. Leave it to the professionals. Tavi and his wife being hit by a speeding train on live stream is just insane. I won't be driving with music blasting full time anymore and I certainly will be looking twice but I don't think I'll miss the big flashing lights anyway, but... And last but not least, the Grenfell fire. It was almost too tragic to mention. It's a tragedy that everyone in the UK remembers. It really annoys me that the officials knew that the cladding was flammable, but they didn't care as it was saving them money. The stay put policy, while I've got to admit does make sense in some scenarios, in this case, it didn't work. Just thinking about all the people in that block gives me goosebumps. But most importantly, what did you think of this one? As always, I'm interested in hearing all your comments below. Don't forget, I do read every single one. And if you've made it this far and you've not tapped that subscribe button, go down there and destroy that thing now. And while you're down there, you may as well click that notification bell to be alerted at when I release content such as this. But I will see you guys in the next one. Bye bye.